Hello and welcome to Mead Week. This week we take a look back at the year 2013, a year dominated by news of sequestration and furlough. But that's not all that happened at Fort Meade. Here's the briefest of looks. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a happy holiday and hopes for a brighter 2014. Installation Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein, General Keith Alexander, Commander of U.S. Cyber Command, Major General Michael Lennington, Commander of the Military District of Washington, and USO Metro President Elaine Rogers joined special guests Stephanie McMahon and David Otonga from World Wrestling Entertainment for the ceremonial ribbon cutting. According to the VA, more than 80,000 veterans living in Anne Arundel and Howard counties now have access to VA health care services at the clinic. The clinic is located just behind the Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center at 2479 5th Street. It's been named Reese Crossings and it represents the future of housing for Army Junior Enlisted Service members. Fort Meade and Pacern Military Housing will hold an official grand opening of the Reese Crossings model home on February 20th. He turned down an invitation to the White House to be at Fort Meade for Holocaust Remembrance Day. Holocaust survivor Robert Baer regaled a packed McGill training center with multiple stories of surviving the Holocaust in the aftermath of World War II. They arrested 30,000 Jews, eeny, meeny, miny, more. Among them, my biological father, whom I never saw again. I used to pass by the Pearl Harbor uh, Memorial every day, and I had no clue what it stood for. I had no clue what it stood for. I thought it was a nice white, you know, structure in the water there. And as I got older and started to appreciate what that stood for and the memorial that that stood for, it gave me a greater appreciation to be American. I, I'm focused not on the branches or sequels. I'm focused on what's really in front of us. Yes, that could. Absolutely. We should plan through October. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. Fort Meade Fire and Emergency Teams responded to a two-alarm fire last Sunday evening that destroyed two homes and damaged two others in the Potomac Place neighborhood. Five families were evacuated. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. This community is unbelievable. We're doing this on 3 July with music, with Budweiser, with barbecue, with fireworks. With NASCAR, we got the Jazz Ambassadors playing in 1900 also. This is an awesome time, and the way we're, we, we're able to do this is because of community. God bless our great nation, our armed services, and Team Mead, Army Strong. Members of the Team Mead Garrison, thank you again for the pride and professionalism you exhibit every day. We have a busy time ahead of us as we continue to manage the growth of Fort Meade while making the very best use of our available resources. So we stand here this morning, shoulder to shoulder, standing next to each other, ready to support each other in our times of need, ready and resilient in the face of adversity. What we're announcing today is this wellness center. Now, wellness centers have a gushy poo sound to it. It sounds like Dr. Oz meets camouflage. <laughs> but really, this is part of a very long march that really started with the head of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mullen. Keynote speaker for Fort Meade's Hispanic Heritage Month celebration, Colonel Irene Zopi, the commander of Strategic Intelligence Group at Bowling Air Force Base, gets the crowd going during her presentation this week at the McGill Training Center. We'll have a lot more from this week's event in a moment. These stories and more, but without a fiscal year 2014 budget and the approaching debt limit ceiling coming, tens of thousands of DOD employees and non-DOD government employees anxiously await the outcome. Major construction projects continue apace here in Fort Meade. Right next to the Cooper Mapes intersection, the Corvius Group's Reese Crossings project is moving towards a springtime opening. The new Exchange Mall has added walls and a roof in recent weeks. AFI's officials estimate an August 2014 completion date for that huge facility. Meanwhile, the new shop at, or as the Exchange calls it, the Gate 32 Express, will feature an Arby's and pizza delivery service. The Express is scheduled to open in February. When we come together, we have a protocol that we follow. And I hope that you will realize well, whatever time that I'm on this stage, whatever time I share my words, yeah. you're not going to see the differences between my people and your people. Hopefully you're going to realize there are so many more common characteristics than there are differences. Navy, unaccustomed to celebrating on Mullins Field, did manage to stake their claim as the victors for this year. But hey, team effort today. Oh. All right, shows that no matter what no, department no, no, no. you work in or what service you work in, hey, we can all come together as a team and beat the Army. And beat the Army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.